So in today's video, we are unboxing the Nerd Oct Axe. So this has been sent by Power Mining, and it's basically two Nerd QXs put together. So you have eight chips on the board. Today we're just going to be unboxing it, showing you the odds and kind of some profitability. And then another video will be coming later, exploring overclocks and other things that we can do with this. So let's open it up here. As you can see, it comes with a power supply, but we'll unbox everything now. So right here, we just have the power supply, which will set down to the side. And then this is the main thing that we're looking for. And that is the Nerd Oct Axe. Let's take everything out. And we should be able to just put it down like that. So this also comes with some stickers from Power Mining. So a bunch of ASICs and then some logos and other things like that. So that's always good to have. And then it also comes with the user manual. So big shout out to Power Mining. They have always been supporting the channel. So if you want to get 10% off the Nerd Octax or any of the Nerd QX versions and a bit at Gamma, then you can use the link in the description to get 10% off. And also the Bitaxe Gamma Turbo, which is releasing very soon. So here it is. You can see that they have two fans here. One of them is slightly out of place, but that's probably to do with the heat sink. And then you have all of your voltage regulators, a little bit things, some things that are different. You have the power mining logo in there, but also you have more fan slots and a different fuse in there. So you can see that that's by there kind of looks like a car fuse if you've ever seen one and then a different power connector so I think that this is actually the XT30 or or sometimes I get confused with XT30 and XT60 but this is basically the bigger version that you see on things like the Zyber 8 and on a couple of the Nerd QX models that are coming out lately so this provides a more steady power supply to these models and that's why you see a lot of them cropping up lately with that. You also have the LCD screen. And I think that's pretty much it in terms of it. We are going to do a teardown video at some point. But they also have a back fan. So this comes on a stand. If we just put it like this. And that kind of keeps it in place. You have the back fan blowing onto the back of the board. And then the two fans at the front trying to take away the heat by there. So over time we've obviously seen innovations in terms of the cooling. A lot of these small solo miners and that's kind of just the innovation that's going on you saw it with the nerd qx you had those ones that had a stand and then a back fan attached as well so those have two fan slots but this has three it looks here and then these are actually daisy chained together right by there for the two fans so you can always add another one on if you want to so let's put that to the side there and let's open up the power supply so first thing you get a fuse, so an extra one just in case the one on the board by there actually doesn't work. And then an Allen key, which is always useful to take off the actual board from the stand. A power connector, pretty standard, which we're probably gonna actually wire this into our own power supply. So these are at 12 volts and we have some 12 volt power supplies we can use. So we can always wire that into there, take the two Nerd QXs off, which if we just pan up here, you can see that they are sitting over there on, but we'd be using that power supply by there. That's one element of it. And then here is the second element. So you have that power connector, as I said, a more steady power connection with these uh, units that you have here on XT30 or 60, whichever one it is. And then a power supply, which right here says that it's max 216 watts. So we'll plug it in, see how much it pulls. I think it's going to pull about 160, just based off of the two Nerd QXs we have running. Without overclocks, it's probably going to be 160, but we'll see when we actually get it loaded up. So as I said at the start of the video, this can do around, I think, 9.6 is the standard number in terms of the terahash but you can overclock it probably to around 11 terahash. I know that there has been models for the Nerd QX, which allows you to go to eight terahash on a Nerd QX. And we'll probably see models for the Nerd Octax come in as well with those features, as that would allow you to do basically 16 terahash on one of these. So pretty good for the watts consumption. And it's using the 
most updated chips, not the S23s, but the S21 Pros. And that gives us a kind of roundabout efficiency of 16 to 17 joules per terahash. Obviously with the Bitax Gamma, you can get the efficiency a lot lower. But with these bigger models that have more chips, the efficiency tends to drop off just because there's more running on the actual board. So you can't get it as low as you would be able to on a Bitax Gamma, super underclocked. And it also depends on the chips on the board. So let's actually plug this in and start it up. Okay, so we have the power supply plugged in there and all we need to do is actually turn it this way so you guys can see it power on. So there we have it running, just plugged it in and you can see there on the LCD, NUD Oct X and it's waiting for the Wi-Fi connection so we can configure that kind of by ourselves and then get it up and running onto the computer. So the main thing, so it's the same setup as you would set up a NUD QX or a BitX, just go through your Wi-Fi and on. you can do this on your phone or on your laptop on your PC and it'll open up the XOS and then you need to type in your Wi-Fi password and name and then it will connect and give you an IP address on the LCD screen. So we're gonna quickly do that and then come back when it's actually online, but we'll show you when it actually starts up because right now it's currently not mining. So now we've connected it up, as you can see in there, it's going to start up, best difficulty is 1.26. So they probably tested it in the test factory. And you can see there the voltage RPM on the fans. I don't know if it actually displays RPM for the back fan, the temperature and the efficiency by there. So as I said, with the watts, it kind of looks like if we just grab it here, about 170 watts that it's pulling, it's probably gonna pull more and currently sitting at around 9.3 or 9.6 terahash. So let's let that spin up and we'll see what we can actually end out with. I'm assuming it's on the default overclock. So we'll kind of see maybe how far it goes. It's looking like 9.8 now. I'm wondering if it's gonna go any higher than that. And also we have right there is our IP address to actually access the miner. So we can go in and access that on the computer now. So we'll leave this running and we'll head over to the XOS and talk you through it. Okay, so here we are on the dashboard and we can see our hash rate by here, our shares and efficiency currently sitting at around 9.8 terahash. So the expected is 9.7, but that's gonna jump up and down. And this actually got up to speed very quickly. So with the nerd QXs, they didn't actually get up to speed that quickly. And you had to give them about five minutes to actually get up to around the expected terahash, but I don't know what the problem is with that. Maybe it's something to do with the XOS not displaying it. Efficiency is 18.46. I'm sure we can get that down to a more efficiency later on. We currently have the power at probably 180 and then the input voltage slightly lower. So that should be about 12 and then the ASIC voltage there. ASIC temperature pretty good at 55, fan speed pretty good and VR temperatures are very, very low for this. Currently mining to power mining zone pool, but that's probably just to test their miners. So we're gonna be throwing this onto a Bitcoin pool. So solohash.co.uk. And to do this, we just go to the settings and then down here, we need to put in our Bitcoin address. So paste that in there, stratum port. If we go back here, and get started uh, stratum and port so solohash.co.uk and then quadruple three so that's fine paste that on and then save so there's if we're looking at the minor settings the frequency currently is 600 default now weirdly enough with the bitax gamma 600 is not the default i think it's 550 but for all the nerd minor variations, it tends to be that 600 is the default, and then that's the default core voltage. Automatic fan control target temperature is 55, so that's working very well. We could actually up that to 60 just to get a little bit more efficiency out of the minor. And then temperature shutdown, so what options do they have? They only have manual and automatic. So we just click save here and then restart it, and that should throw it up to the pool. And whilst that's going on, let's check the solo odds on this miner. 
So with a terahash of around 9.8, that gives us a time estimate of 2,278 years to hit a Bitcoin block. So obviously, the odds are really not in our favor. But as we have said in many videos, it's just a chance every 10 minutes to try and hit a block. And we're always into solo mine and Bitcoin, so that's why we have these devices displayed on the channel. But if you're looking for revenue, we can also do a calculation for that. So our current terahash is 9.8 and our power consumption is around 180. And we don't really need to worry about the electricity cost, but if we calculate there, we can see that this can bring in 36 cents of revenue per day. And then on the electricity cost, it would cost 22. So the break even point on one of these is probably 0.8, I wanna say. Yeah, so if you have a power cost over 0.8 cents per kilowatt hour, then it's probably not a good idea to actually mine for these on revenue terms. But this is actually the biggest solo miner that we've seen in terms of the terahash. It can go up to probably around 11, as I said at the start of the video, and could even be taken further with the new firmware that allows you to overclock past that limit that was set at the start for the nerd QXs. So comparing it to things like the Avalon Nano that can only do six terahash, this far outweighs it in that regard. And on the efficiency side, it is the latest chip. So they are the most efficient miner that you can buy currently, but we'll probably see S23 chips being used later on down the line for a lot of the models that we're seeing right now on the channel. So those will probably be coming later on into next year as people get chips. So as I said, revenue, you don't really want to mine revenue, but if you were thinking of it, that's kind of the figures for the revenue right there. So if you go back to solo hash here and we click on our address, we should be submitting shares, but we'll check the system now and show the logs. So maybe the pool is just updating in the background, but it looks like we are submitting shares to the pool. And currently we don't have any rejected. So that's the nerd oct -X unboxing and we'll be doing a lot more videos with this going on into the future just wanted to show you guys it i mean it's basically two nerd qx's put together so there's not really much to explain past that it has eight chips on the board technically less efficient than just a nerd qx but as you go down in terms of the chip size they get more efficient because you're not running as much components on top of it to run the rest of the chips but as i said there will be an overclocking video definitely coming and then a bunch of other videos with this, but you guys can leave some kind of suggestions in the comments for what videos you want to see with the Nerd Octax. And we might even stick it onto different coins. So I know that we had our kind of mining strategy that we were going to go through, and that's probably what we're going to stick with for the first half of 2026. So that video will be coming out later down the line, but we've already recorded it, so this is a bit backwards. But that is our strategy going forward, is to stick the big terahash miners onto Bitcoin and then separate the smaller terahash miners down into different coins so we can actually hit blocks using these devices as we never hit a block using these devices currently on any network. So if we check on our pool here, the hash rate hasn't updated but we have had shares submitted and that actually brings our block probability overall down to one in 1,674 years. So that's pretty going to change as the hash rate actually decides to show up on the pool. But it's probably going to bring our block probability down to 1 in 500 years. So pretty low still. But obviously the more terahash you add, the odds get easier there. As I said, big shout out to Power Mining for sending this over in time for Christmas. And if you guys want to get 10% off, you guys can order them using the code Sterling, I believe. So if we just add this to the basket and click add to cart and then so using code sterling you can get 74 pounds off i don't know what that is in dollars but you can also do this so you can spin the wheel to get free delivery or some percentage off if you want to sign up for that as well and then you can also buy a bit axe gamma a nerd qx plus plus or even the gamma node and the gamma turbo which is coming very very soon so these are Still awaiting to be shipped, I believe, but they are coming very soon, very soon. I think you can pre-order them, and I think you can sign up for the email for that one, but you can pre-order this one as well for the Bitaxe Gamma Note. 
So let me know your thoughts in the comments, what you think about the Nerd Octax. Make sure you like this video and subscribe for more content like this.